Let me show you why you should stop throwing errors in JavaScript. So for this, I have this basic function, validate JSON object. We take in JSON, so it is of type unknown, just so that the caller doesn't need to validate that the value they're passing in is a string. The function will ultimately do that validation internally, which might provide a better developer experience. And this is going to return a record where the key is a string and the value is unknown. So a JSON object, we're going to extract the object. So we're going to parse the JSON into a valid object. So here we have a try catch. We have a clause guard. If type of JSON is different from string, then just throw a new error. The input is not a string. Then we parse the JSON. So we're going to be using JSON.parse. And this in fact throws an error if the incoming text is not valid JSON. So we need to catch this error. And so we need to enclose this within a try catch. And then we check if this is a record. So we have a utility function is record takes in a value of type unknown. And then we have a type predicate saying value is record. So this is simply going to give us that full type safety in such way that if we invoke this function and this results in true, then TypeScript can infer that parse JSON is actually this type that we specify here. And so internally, we just say return type of value is equal to object and the value cannot be null and it must not be an array. So pretty basic. Now in the case it is not a record, so not a valid JSON object, we just throw an error saying the JSON string is not a valid object. Now everything looks okay. I mean, we can just invoke the function validate JSON object, we pass in a JSON string, and now we get access to the JSON object, right? Well, not quite because we're throwing the errors. Sure, if this doesn't throw an error, we do in fact get a record of key value pairs of string and unknown. But this is really bad and you shouldn't be throwing errors. And the reason is because you, as the caller, have no idea if this is going to throw an error. In fact, there is nothing in the language that is going to tell you if this function throws anything whatsoever. We can see that it returns a record, but there is no information about errors themselves. So we have to delve deep into the implementation of this function, see if it throws any errors. And if it does, then we can wrap this up within a try catch and then handle everything accordingly. But this becomes very tedious, very error prone. Again, you have no idea if this function throws an error and it adds a lot of code. We need to always use try catch blocks and we could even nest the try catch. So to avoid this and to make it very explicit to the caller that this function is going to throw an error or well could result in an error instead of throwing errors, you should use discriminated unions instead. So you should do this instead. We have the same function is record, but then instead of rethrowing the errors, we have a type JSON validation result. And this is a discriminated union. The discriminator here is the success property. So in the case that this is true, we get access to data. In the case that this is false, we get access to an error. That means that if we invoke this function and then take a look at the JSON object, so JSON object that we can only access the success property. So we can no longer access the JSON object because there is a possibility of an error. So for this, we need to say if it is successful, then we can get access to the data property, which as we know, is a record. Otherwise, if success is not true, we get access to the error. So we are at the very least making sure that whoever is calling this function is aware that this function could result in an error and the developer is not coding blindly. And then a couple of days, weeks, or even months 
they found out that one of the bugs in their application was because this function threw an error and it was uncut. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't throw errors because in certain situations it's better. For example, in your web server, you need to throw an error for risk that is going to be caught by an error middleware that is going to automatically respond back to the client. Maybe you have an error like throw new HTTP error and then you could pass in the status and then the message. This is completely fine. I'm not saying you should handle everything with discriminated unions now. But for the case of these functions that shouldn't be caught by your global error middleware, you should always use discriminated unions instead. So remember, with a discriminated union, you switch upon a property. So here, these two objects must share the same property because this is the discriminator. So success true and then success false. And again, in the case of true, you can specify data or the value, whatever you want. And the same with the error. Now, obviously, this doesn't have to be an instance or interface of error. This could be whatever you want, maybe your own error object or class. But as long as you're making it very clear to the caller that this might result in an error, you're good to go. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one.